enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Come on, everybody at home. Come on, come on. Let's go old school. Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for the end. Come on, let's say that one more time in your living room. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will, I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. 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 to thank him for. I will rejoice. He's still been good. I will rejoice. Oh, he's been so good. I will rejoice. 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 I got a reason to praise him. I will rejoice. I got a reason to lift him. I will rejoice. When I think I will rejoice of the goodness of Jesus. I will rejoice. And all he's done. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I'm gonna lift my hands. I will rejoice. I'm gonna do some glory. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Mount Olive Church Ministries online worship service. We are so excited to be in your home. We are so excited to minister to some of you who are even at work right now. This is the day that the Lord has made and God has not given us a spirit of fear but we have power, we have love, we have a sound mind. I'm gonna say that again. This is the day yes, yes, that yes, the yes. Lord has made. And yes, you can yes, make a decision, you can be mad, you can be complaining, or you can choose to rejoice. We choose to rejoice today. Have church with us. Tell all of your loved ones to get in one room. We're about to lift up Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, may we who have no risk factors remember those who are most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health and making their rent. God, may we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools are closed remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we, God, who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. God, may we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. God, as fear grips our country, let us choose love. And during this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Father, we magnify you. Yes. We glorify you God the church is a church without walls and you said we're two or three gathering your name you'll be in the midst God touch every person under the sound of my voice touch the Johnson family touch the Arnold family God stir up the gift that's within us today so that somebody's life can be changed we give you glory honor and praise in the name that is above every name in a name that's greater than COVID-19 in the name of Jesus our Savior now clap your your hands in your living room and give God some praise. Let's take it to another level. Oh. 
Come on, somebody celebrate Jesus right where you are. Lift up your praise, lift up your worship, and give him glory. Give him the honor. He's worthy, to, he's worthy of glory, worthy of honor, worthy to be worshiped, worthy of glory, worthy of honor, worthy to be praised, worthy of glory, worthy of honor, worthy to be praised. We love you today. We bless you today we magnify you we exalt you we lift you up you are great you are mighty you are awesome you're sufficient you're magnificent you're marvelous majestic you're holy you're righteous and we give you praise and we give you praise in the midst of our situations we give you praise come on right where you are give them some praise give them some praise Give him some praise. I know it's been rough, but give him praise. I know you've been crying. I know you've been depressed, but give him glory. Give him glory. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises, his praises, his praises, his praises, not worry. Praise, not confusion. Praise, not doubt, but praise. His praises shall come continually be in my mouth hallelujah to Jesus we come to bless him today we come to invite invite Jesus in your home today and we want to just sing today just some devotional songs it's first Sunday hallelujah I said it's first Sunday hallelujah and in spite of our situations we still have a praise I need you to look at your loved one look at somebody next to you on your couch and just say I love Jesus He's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus and he loves me. Come on, you can clap your hands right where you are. Song is simple, it says, I love Jesus. He's my savior. Storms are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus. He loves me. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my savior. He's my savior. Storms are raging. Storms are raging. He's my shelter. He's my shelter. Where he leads, Where me, he leads me, I will follow. I will follow. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He loves me. He loves me. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my savior. He's my savior. Storms are raging. Storms are raging. He's my shelter. He's my shelter. Where, he Where he leads me, I will follow. I will follow. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He loves me. He Come loves on, let's sing it again. I love, I love Jesus. He's my savior. He's my savior. Storms are raging. Storms are raging. He's my shelter. He's my shelter. Where he leads me, he leads I will follow. I will I love, I love Jesus. He loves me. He One loves more time, me. say I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He's my savior. He's my savior. Storms are raging. Storms are raging. He's, my He's my shelter. Where he leads Where me, he leads I, will I will follow. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He loves me. He loves me. Come on, I like this song. It just goes like this. It says, I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. He has been. He has been so good to me. Come on, let's sing it again. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Yeah. And I won't take it back. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I won't take it back. Said I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Yeah. Everybody say, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I won't take, and it, I back. Won't take it back. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Yeah. And I won't take it back. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Yeah. And I won't take it back. He has it been back. so. He has been so Walk good it up. to me. Said he's been so good. So good. So good. So good. So good. So good. So very good.
wonderful name of Jesus. Say, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name. Name bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus. You want to bless that wonderful name, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus. No, other name. no other name I know. Say there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Power, in the name power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. No other name. Name. No other name. I One more time, say bless that wonderful name, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, that wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus. You want to bless that wonderful name, that wonderful name of Jesus. Jesus. No other name. No other name. I know. Well, say Jesus. Jesus, no other name, no, no other, other name, name under heaven can save us. Jesus, 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 Jesus. no other name, no other name, I know. Come on, everybody, say Jesus, Jesus, say Jesus, Jesus. no other name, no other name under heaven can save us. Say Jesus, Jesus. call his name, Jesus. no other name. Yeah. One more time, everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. No other name. No other name. Under, under heaven can say Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 No other name. No other name. I know. Well, see, yes, I got in. Yes, I got in. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. City, yes, I got in. Yes, I got in. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. City, yes, I got it. Hey, yes, I got it. everlasting life. Everlasting life. City, yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. City, yes, I got it. 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 Everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. God, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. He gave it to me, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life, everlasting life. Say yes, I got it. Say the yes, I got it. Say the yes, I got it. If you got it, you want to wave your hand. You want to wave your hand. You want to wave your hand. Say the yes, I got it. What's his name? What's his name? Yes, sir. What's his name? What's his name? Power in the name. Healing in the name. Freedom in the name. Joy in the name. Love in the name. Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. Sickness has to flee at that name. At the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that he is Lord. For there's no other name under heaven. We're given unto men, Jesus. and by we can be saved. Jesus. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, Jesus. and be ye lifted up, Jesus. ye everlasting doors. Jesus. And the King of glory Jesus. shall come in, Jesus. shall come in, Jesus. he shall come in. Jesus. Who 
is this king Jesus. this king of glory Jesus. the lord strong and mighty Jesus. the lord mighty in battle Jesus. he's the lord of hosts Jesus. he's the great i am jesus. say jesus. jesus say jesus jesus say jesus 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 the more i call him the better i feel jesus 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 my way through my way over my way out Jesus Jesus King of Kings Lord of Lords the great I am Almighty El Shaddai Elohim Jesus 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 strong and mighty strong and mighty Mighty, Jesus, mighty, Jesus, and Jesus, battle, Jesus, Jesus, Jehovah, 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 Jeh
If I'll be lifted up, I'll draw men. I'll draw men. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, I'll draw them. Something about that name. Something about that name. Something about that name. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You ought to call him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, right there. Just call his name. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What's his name today? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. Oh, healer, healer, healer. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, pray with me. Father, we honor you and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this Palm Sunday 2020. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Now, God, speak a word, oh God, to your people. We need to hear from you today. We give you glory, we give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grab your Bibles, amen, as we're preparing to go into the Word today. We're going to the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 19, and we're preaching on the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem as this is Palm Sunday, uh, 2020, amen. We're going to Luke, chapter 19, and we want to begin reading today at verse 28. Luke, chapter 19, beginning at verse 28, it says, after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you'll find a coat tied there, which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him the Lord needs it. I want to give you an encouraging word and talk for a few moments from this subject. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. You can type that in if you're watching on our Facebook Live. God wants to use you. What would be on your mind if you knew you were going to die within a week? You probably spend as much time with those who you love the most you probably would settle any disputes with whomever you had odds. You probably would pay any debts that you owed. You probably would take care of unfinished business. You probably would eat your favorite foods, see or do something you've always wanted to see and do. There would be little time for sleep. There would be little time for trivial pursuits. There would be no time for insignificant details of life. Most of us, the truth of the matter is, don't get the opportunity to do that. Most of us don't get a forewarning that our lives will come to an end within a week, but Jesus did. And this passage was the beginning of the last week of his life. As God, in his foreknowledge, he knew exactly what was going to happen in the next several days. 
He knew that there would be a triumphant entry. He knew that there would be a Passover meal. He knew that he would be betrayed. He knew that there would be denial. He knew that there would be a mock trial. He knew that there would be a beating and imprisonment. He knew that there would be excruciating pain. He knew that there would be humiliation, crucifixion, and ultimately death. The most important event in all of human history was about to take place, the salvation of you and I. He who knew no sin would become sin for us. Uh, his time was limited. He had lots to do. He had to make sure that his disciples were prepared to carry out the work that he had begun. Can you imagine what was on the mind of Jesus? So many details, so many decisions, hallelujah, so many things to consider. But yet in this passage and in this scripture in Luke chapter 19 verse 30, the Bible says Jesus says to his disciples, go to a neighboring village and there is a unbroken coat tied he said go there find the donkey find the coat untie him and bring him to me <laughs> A coat, a donkey, something insignificant, something unimportant, something irrelevant. An irrelevant, irrelevant animal is on his mind. Not only is it on his mind, but even its location. Not only just its location, but the coat's condition and its purpose. Can, can you imagine what was on Jesus' mind? Well, can you imagine even right now what's on God's mind? Because if you look at the signs of the times, time is running out there's so much to do and Jesus is preparing to return there are nations to prepare there are prophecies to fulfill hallelujah there's a world to be saved there are prayers still to be answered and there's a church to put in order can you imagine what's on God's mind right now so many details so many decisions and so many things to consider but I can't to preach to you in your living room and tell you in the midst of all of that although you may seem to yourself like you're insignificant or you're not important or you're irrelevant in the big scheme of things I stopped by to tell you this morning God knows exactly who you are God knows where you are and God knows what he wants to do in your life God knows who you are and I hear God saying this morning, I know you by name. I hear God saying the reason why you ought to be encouraged is because you are significant to me. Hallelujah. You are filled with my spirit. You know who I am. You have a relationship with me. You know how to pray and worship and you know my word. Hallelujah. I came to tell you in your living room, in your bedroom, you may not be known to the world. You may not have your name in light. Amen. Wall Street may not be aware of you. Hollywood may not have you on the Hollywood walk of fame. Hallelujah. People may not recognize your name. But I came to tell you Jesus knows you. He knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows how you're feeling right now. He knows some of you are afraid. He knows some of you are discouraged. He knows what you're going through right now. Jesus knows what he wants to do in your life. Come here, come here, come here. Lock in this morning. Jesus says, I want you to go to the village and there's an unbroken, hallelujah, tote a coat tied he says I want you to find him and untie him and bring him to me there's a reason why the coat was tied number one if you read the text no man had ever sat on it before number two you've got to understand something the reason why the coat was tied is because it was wild it was unbroken it was unyielded it was independent and I came to tell you a while 
loud unbroken donkey is good for nothing its life is aimless and it wanders about with no purpose and there's no difference between us and that donkey An unsubmitted human life to God hallelujah is a life hallelujah without purpose without control you'll be hallelujah tied up and bound up but I came to tell you if you submit to God today God will set you free I came to preach to you this morning and tell you today is the day of deliverance bondages are going to be broken captives are going to be loosed prisoners are going to be set free I came to preach to you in your house in your living room in your car and tell you that Satan's power is breaking off your life for good Satan's power is breaking off your children Satan's power is breaking off your grandchildren Satan's power is breaking off your marriage Jesus says go into the town and there you'll find a coat tied up he says loose them and bring him to me I came to stand today as one of Jesus' disciples God sent me here to loose you today I'm not here to entertain you at your house I'm on assignment this morning I'm on a mission to destroy the works of the enemy 1st John chapter 3 verse 8 says for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the enemy I came to tell y'all Satan is a trespasser he has no legal rights or authority over your life everything Satan holds he holds illegally Jesus says untie the coat verse 30 and bring him to me I came to tell you the coat was by a door where two ways met and I came to tell you listening to me right now hallelujah you can't go as you please you can't really move how you used to move God has our attention this is a moment of decision there's an open door of opportunity and you're at the crossroads right now and I want to know right now will you let the Lord use your life hallelujah will you walk in your purpose hallelujah when you start walking in your purpose this text lets us know get ready for opposition because Jesus says to them hallelujah expect opposition expect resistance expect confrontation in other words expect a fight because the devil never surrenders without a fight Jesus says when you go untie the donkey if somebody asks you why are you changing it why are you untying the donkey some people are going to ask you now in the midst of this pandemic why are you changing why are you looking for so many online services today why is it that you always talking about when this pandemic is over you can't wait to get back in church why do you pray so much now why do you read your bible why are you changing I came to tell you the point is this when the master commands you to be loosed nothing can hold you back no devil is big enough to bind you up he says if somebody asks you why when they question you when they misjudge your motives and when they question your decisions here's what you tell them the Lord has need of me hallelujah type that in right now God wants to use me God wants to use you you're valuable to him he's called you to a higher purpose I told you last week we can't go into this thing with clean hands and come out with messy hearts God wants to use you I feel 
like preaching in here because God knows who you are. He knows what he wants to do in your life. Jesus says the reason why I need you to loose the donkey is because I need him. I want to use him. Look at me and listen to me real good. Hallelujah. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. You might have shot up. You might have snorted a line in your driveway this morning. You may be sitting high right now listening to me. You may be a fornicator or a liar. You may be an adulterer. You may be a homosexual or a lesbian. But the bottom line is the Lord wants to use you because the truth of the matter is we're all at something. We were all bound by sin. Satan at one time had us all. But the reason why you ought to shout in your living room is because you're not who you used to be. Jesus set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. If we was in church right now, I would tell you to high five your neighbor. But I'm going to tell you to write the words free. Just say free. Type it in. Everything around me is free. Y'all don't hear me in here. Somebody watching me right now. You're an ex-drug addict. You're an ex-liar. You're an ex-fornicator. You're an ex-alcoholic. You formerly had a porno addiction. But aren't you so glad that Jesus reached down and snatched you out? You ought to be shouting in your bedroom. You ought to be shouting in your living room. When you look back over your life and see what the Lord has done you've got a reason to open your mouth don't you shut your mouth in this pandemic but every time you think about the goodness of Jesus every time you think about oh we gonna have some church today where he brought you from it ought to be enough to make you holler I came to tell you you're valuable you're vital to God's plan there's a purpose assigned to your life. That's the message of the gospel. John 3.16, y'all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. If you never hear me preach again, know you're vital to God. You know what that word vital means? Vital means urgently needed. Vital means indispensable. Vital means means essential. Vital means absolutely necessary. Vital means crucial. Vital means critical. Your body cannot live without blood. Hallelujah. Without a liver. Without kidneys. Without lungs. Without a heart. You're just as vital to God as blood is to your body. We're getting ready to have a church in a minute. As hallelujah blood is important to your lungs and your liver as your heart is to your body I came to tell you you matter to God we've heard it said so many times God doesn't need me hallelujah but I sure need him God can make it without me I'm about to mess with some of y'all theology I sure can't make it without him God can do it without me but I can't do anything without him God is awesome but I'm nothing God is powerful but I'm weak I'm helpless and I came to tell you that that sounds good and churchy. That sounds very humble and spiritual. It's self-denying and God-exalting, but it's not biblical. Let's dive into the text. Hallelujah. It's just the opposite. Hallelujah. What this mindset does, it separates us from God. It puts God and his power and his anointing on the outside of us. It puts God way up in heaven with all of his power and his glory uh, sitting on the big throne surrounded by angels uh, cherubims and seraphims uh, and it puts us way down on earth weak uh, and lowly barely getting by uh, with one foot in the grave uh, and the other on a banana peel uh, just hoping uh, to get a touch every now and then uh, just to make it over the next mountain uh, it sounds spiritual uh, it may sound humble but it's not biblical 
Let me tell you the word. Number one, the Bible says that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I wish y'all read your Bible. Hallelujah. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Read 1 John chapter 4 verse 15. Don't take my word for it. The Bible says God dwells in me. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16. The Bible says God lives in me. And not only does he live in me, he lives with me. Can I tell y'all in your living room, he doesn't just call me up or text me. He doesn't just email me. He doesn't just drop by to visit me every now and then. But he's a permanent resident in me. He walks through my feet. He touches through my hands. He speaks through my lips. When I show up, God shows up. When I get there, God is there. Let me preach to some of y'all. The kingdom of God is not a place somewhere over the rainbow where I go when I die. The kingdom of God is a present tense reality. It's here right now. It's here in in me it's here in you hallelujah if you receive the king in your life the kingdom is in you y'all don't believe that Luke chapter 17 verses 20 and 21 says the kingdom of God cometh not with observation neither shall they say lo here or there behold the kingdom of God is within you preach pastor Watkins I'm doing the best I can that means can I tell you that authority and the power of the kingdom of God is within you and I can I preach it like I feel it when you show up the kingdom shows up Romans 14 and 17 says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost somebody type this it's the Holy Ghost hallelujah it's the Holy Ghost what are you talking about pastor what I'm trying to tell you it's a spiritual kingdom hallelujah 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 says for we are laborers together with God notice not for God but we work with God we're working together we're partners in the kingdom God has chosen to partner with us to bring in a harvest let me help some of you believers out that's been complaining about this pandemic get yourself together have your moment to holler and cry there's still work to do because the kingdom is on the inside of you y'all don't hear me beloved God is spirit and we are flesh can I argue this point I said God is spirit and we are flesh God needs our flesh to touch flesh God needs our hands to touch God needs our feet to walk God needs our lips to speak God needs our flesh we need his spirit I said God needs our flesh but we need his spirit y'all slow y'all gonna catch up God needs our flesh but we need his spirit his spirit is in the anointing hallelujah I thank God for his spirit I just don't have it when I'm at church with a crowd of people running around but I feel his spirit right now with nobody in this church you feel his spirit right in your living room because it's on the inside of you his spirit is in us can I preach to some of y'all if your feet don't go God doesn't go if your hands don't reach out God doesn't reach out if you don't open your mouth God doesn't speak I know some of y'all don't know your Bible but hear what I'm telling you Romans chapter 10 hallelujah 14 and 15 says how shall they call on him whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him who they have not seen or have not heard and how shall they preach 
without a preacher. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 15. Look at it. It says, how shall they preach except they be sent? I came to tell you, just as Jesus brought God to us, now we bring God to other people. In this pandemic, you better take God to your family. In this pandemic, you better get on Facebook. Hallelujah. And take the kingdom to the world. For I hear Jesus saying, hallelujah. In John chapter 20, verse 21. As the Father has sent me, hallelujah, so I send you. I hear Jesus in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. Saying, behold, I have anointed you. I've anointed you to heal the sick. I've anointed you to cast out demons. I've anointed you to set the captive free. You ought to look at somebody in your living room. You ought to type it on the internet. I'm anointed. Hallelujah. The pandemic can't change it. You're anointed. The White House cannot change it. You are anointed. We are here right now in the midst of one of the most trying times in our nation. But God wants us to continue the work that Jesus started. You are chosen and you are appointed. I came to tell you I'm getting ready to close. Hallelujah. That you are able. God wants you on his team. Some of y'all been bootlegging. But now God has your attention. God sent me to tell you you're able. You have the right stuff. God wants you on his team. He said go find the donkey and untie it. You ought to tell somebody untie me. Oh yes untie me. God has work for me to do. Hallelujah. There are those who are waiting for you to touch them. There are those who are waiting for you to speak a word over their life. You are the only ones that Jesus, hallelujah, will be presented to by me. You are the only ones, hallelujah, that some people will only see Jesus when you show up. You are the only Bible that some people will ever read. I came to tell you, you have their healing. You have their deliverance. You have their miracle. You have their breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some people think Jesus and his disciples had a full-grown Holy Ghost with all power. But I just came to tell you, you don't have no baby Holy Ghost. You don't have a little power. You have the same power because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Uh, greater is he uh, that's in you uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, greater is he uh, that's in you uh, than poverty and lack. Uh, greater is he uh, that's in you uh, than drugs and alcohol. Uh, greater is he uh, that's in you uh, than your marital problems. Uh, greater is he. Uh, that's in you that's in witchcraft and sorcery greater is he that's in you than depression than fear than anxiety than stress than oppression greater is he that's in you than fevers than heart trouble than sugar diabetes than cancer than arthritis than kidney problems and liver trouble me and God are a team me and God are partners me and God can do the impossible God wants to use you you and God are unstoppable hallelujah he said send two disciples and loose the donkey and if they ask you why you untying it 
tell them the master needs it I'm through with y'all today but the master needs you he needs you to tell it everywhere you go for God you live and for God you die he needs you to tell it that even in a pandemic I will bless the law at all times nothing can break me nothing can shake me you ought to lift your hands and say use me Lord use me Lord take my hands use my hands use my mouth use me Lord I came to tell you God is untying you God is setting you free Jesus yeah Jesus is untying you to tell a dying world if God could bring me out He's able, he's able, he's able. Can I ask y'all a question? Won't he do it? Won't he bring you out? Won't he make a way? Won't he turn it around? Won't God do it? Hallelujah. He'll use you, and when he uses you, he's going to get the glory. I'm through now. How do I know he'll get the glory? When Jesus got on the donkey on his way to Jerusalem, they did not praise the donkey. But the Bible says on the first Palm Sunday, Jesus rode on the donkey. But the donkey didn't get the glory. Jesus got the glory. They laid palms in the ground and said, Hosanna, Hosanna, somebody praise him now. Somebody lift them up and wow they were saying hosanna some of the pharisees said shut them up some of the pharisees said jesus tell them to be quiet but jesus said if they hold their peace the rocks will cry out i know we're not in a building, but in your living room, in your kitchen. Don't let a rock cry out. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. God wants to use you. The first Palm Sunday, Jesus used something so insignificant as a donkey to ride into Jerusalem to kick off Passion Week. If Jesus can use an ass, I know he can use you and me. The king did not come riding in on a horse. But he was fulfilling the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9. Was said Jesus would come riding on a donkey. He did not come for an earthly kingdom. But Jesus came that we might be saved. He came meek, lowly, and humble. One thing this pandemic has done for some of us is checking our pride. Because everybody's on the level playing field. You can be Oprah to me. From me just to the average neighbor. Can't nobody do what they want to do. Everybody has to social distance. He's checking our pride. Jesus, the king, rode in on a donkey. He practiced humility. Some of us, pre-pandemic, were so high that we 
will even speak to people. We were so important that even in church, we would walk around the pew not to talk to somebody. We were so important because of our cars, our stuff. If you are blessed enough to still have some income, you got it, and you only can spend it on food or on Amazon or liquor. All those clothes, and we ain't really got nowhere to go. What I'm trying to tell you is be humble, sit down. Let's look at our king, our savior. He came riding in on a donkey. In the midst of getting ready to face one of the worst weeks and challenging weeks of Jesus' time, his mind was on a donkey. If his mind was on a donkey and he was on his road to Calvary, don't you know God has you on his mind? Some of you, the walls of your house have been closing in on you. God hasn't forgotten you. Some of you have lost loved ones. God hasn't forgotten you. So many of you are even in the hospital. You may be watching. God hasn't forgotten you. He wants to use you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you use insignificant things to make a big difference. God, somebody under the sound of my voice felt so tarnished and felt so nasty and felt so sinful that they didn't think that they were on your mind. But right now, today, God, if they don't know you, I pray that they say yes to you. I pray, God, that they understand that they matter to you. They're valuable. Maybe their family has ostracized them. Maybe their family has labeled them the black sheep. But God, if you can use a donkey, a coat, I know you can use us all. Father, I pray for somebody listening, if they don't know you, I pray that they will give you an eternal yes. It's not about God, them giving the preacher their hand, because they can't do it, but they got to give you their heart. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we say amen. Say it in your living room. Say it in your house. Listen, listen today, if you want to accept Christ into your life, you can do that right now. It's as simple as ABC. A, believe, accept, rather, Jesus Christ into your life. Accept him as your Savior, your Lord. Acknowledge that, hey, I got some stuff. I got some issues. B, believe that he died for your sins, that he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. C, confess it. You may not be able to get close to people. Text somebody. Say, I got saved today. Text somebody and say that I didn't just go through this pandemic with clean hands and I'm coming out with a clean heart do that today listen we would love to hear from you at Mount Olive if you made a decision for Christ and you said yes to Jesus you can email us let us know email us I made the decision I made the decision connect with us and we'll connect back with you we'll respond to you how can you do that you ask Simply email us at MT Olive, that's Mount Olive, one word, MT Olive at Snet.net. I'm gonna say that again. Mount Olive, MT Olive, one word at Snet.net. And just let us know who you are, your contact information, and that you made a decision. We appreciate you tuning in today. We know this is a very important Sunday, it's Palm Sunday, and, and we're gonna take the Lord's Supper in a few moments. It's giving time today. It's time to give unto the Lord. For you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. I said you can't beat God's giving. Hallelujah. We're quarantined, but our giving and our tithes 
are not quarantined because heaven is still opened. And so we as a church family, Mount Olive, we know when we are a giving community, we're a giving church. So whether you're on the website, whether you're listening on the, uh, the line, maybe you're on Facebook Live, I want you to prepare to give now in whatever way you're going to give. You can give on our Giblify on our website. It's offering time just like Sunday morning. If you go to Giblify, type in Mount Olive Church Ministries. You can go to our cash app, Mount Olive Hartford. Many of you have been mailing your seed in or dropping it off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 to 4. But it's time to give. Our church today as a community, all over 800 of us, we've committed months ago that above our tithe and offering, on first Sundays, we would sow a seed, $20 seed. We do this every first Sunday. We're going to continue. But today, it won't be for our van project. It will be for our operation so we can keep getting the message out. This week, we plan to feed over 150 families in this pandemic. We're going to continue to do the kingdom work because the church should be without walls. So this week, we're going to do that by way of announcement Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 7. There's grab-and-go meals. All right, they're going to be able to grab and go. It's going to be very safe. We're going to make sure we adhere to the social distancing. How are we able to do that? Because the church is still rolling on. And so we need every person today, all 800 of you members, all of our friends and partners to sow that $20 seed so that we can carry out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, we're praying, we're blessing our offering. I've done it on my phone already because I'm excited to give. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow and give. Father, we thank you that we're sowing in a pandemic, but our, har our harvest is going to meet up with us. We thank you, Lord, for the church. We thank you for the kingdom work. We pray, Lord, that the work can continue. And we, we bless you in Jesus' name. And let us say amen. You're giving now, give the fine. You're preparing to give. As you're doing that, we're going to prepare right to have our media team uh, give us a few announcements if you go to Mount Olive you know that's what we do as you're giving as you're on Giblify now as you're on Cash App as you're doing what you're doing please I'm sorry for my Facebook uh, watchers you got to see it kind of in a weird way um, but those watching on the website it'll look more familiar to you so we yield to you now in Jesus name Hello, Mount Olive family. I am Shonda Malford, and this is Praise Break News. On Wednesday, April 8th at 7 p.m., join us for our first virtual Bible study. You can watch us via Facebook Live or live stream by going to mocm.org or calling into 712-770-5505, access code 869-059. This will be each Wednesday. Guys, let's remember to practice social distancing. There are so many ways to connect with your friends. You can use FaceTime, Marco Polo, Google Duo, or even Zoom with the proper passcode, or just simply picking up a phone. Join us for our conference call church school on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. by calling into the same number used for our Bible study and our Sunday service. Happy birthday this week to Jenica Holly, Joe Strickland, Jason J. Myers Jr., and Timothy Ruffin. If you have a birthday this week and are watching us, please type in your birthday so that we can celebrate you too. Follow the Mount on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and mocm.org. And remember, as always, <clears throat> have an informational week. What he said. <laughs> Amen. We're preparing now to take our Lord's Supper. We had a drive-through yesterday. It was good to see so many of you come to the drive-through and pick up your communion in your palms. Um, as we're preparing for the Lord's Supper, amen, and even my little team in here, there are some for everybody, amen, if you want to partake. As we prepare to go to the Lord's Supper, I do want to say we want to pray for the Johnson family. We lost Deacon Gordon Johnson 
to this horrible disease, COVID-19. He passed away on yesterday. Any of you know that if this was a regular Sunday, you couldn't leave the sanctuary until I leave out because Deacon Johnson was like personal security. He stopped everybody. We thank God for his life. He fought a good fight. He kept the faith. We ask that you pray for his wife, Deaconess Gilda Johnson, as she is also battling this disease in the hospital and she's grieving her husband. Pray for their children. Pray for their family. This thing is real. It's no joke. So let us be prayerful. Let us be safe. Let us be careful. We pray for the Arnold family as their household is dealing with this. Pray for every family all over this nation, all over this world who is dealing either with grief or sick loved ones. I thank God I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood will never lose its power. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus said, as often as you partake of the Lord's Supper, he said, he said, do it in remembrance of me. At this time, if you're watching at home, I want you as a family to take out everything you've prepared for the Lord's Supper. And we're going to pray. We're going to consecrate it. Amen. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We're still communion. We're still in fellowship. Let us pray. Father, we thank you on this Palm Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Bless this sacred meal, which is only symbolic of your body, which is broken, your blood, which was shed. Bless it. Go to every living room, every household in this sanctuary. Bless it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, Oh, the blood. That gives me strength, oh, from day to day, it will never lose its power. Come on, you know it. Help me sing it right where you are. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain, oh yeah, and it flows to the of me. Let us now all eat together. And in like manner he took the cup. And this cup is symbolic of the blood that was shed for us at Calvary. This is a symbol of the new covenant that God has made with us. Amen. For now we are saved 
by his grace. Let us now partake. And if you go to Mount Olive, I say this on first Sundays, I'm going to say it now. It's the Bible. After Jesus and his disciples, they concluded the Last Supper. They went to the Mount of Olives. They went to Mount Olive. Yeah. They went singing hymns. At this time, before you get back to your family or cooking or brunch or whatever you're doing today, let your light so shine that men may see your good works. Watch this. But glorify the Father in heaven. It's not what we're going through, but it's how we respond to it. The master has need of you. Let him use you. May God bless you. May God keep you. We look to talk to you Wednesday night, Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll have our first virtual Bible study. This week, let's continue to pray for those who are dealing with COVID. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our city. Let's pray for our state. But don't forget, this is Passion Week, a.k.a. Holy Week. Let us not forget that we're on the road to Good Friday. Sometimes these days are running into each other. We don't know what day is what. This is Holy Week. Today is Palm Sunday. Today Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Friday is Good Friday. When he hung on the cross from the 6th to the ninth hour. And the next Sunday that's coming is Resurrection Sunday. Don't complain that we can't wear our fabulous suit. You can't get your new dress. Just thank God for the blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood. Till next time. May God keep you. May heaven shine upon you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, family. I love you. God bless you.